Hi friends, I am Dr. Pratap Singh Rato. I have done MD in forest medicine. In today we will continue with the regional injuries. In today's video, we will discuss about meningeal injuries. In that, we will mainly discuss about intracranial hemorrhages. So, meningeal membranes covers the brain inside the cranial cavity. It consists mainly of dura matter, arachnoid matter, and pia matter. Dura matter is a strong grey bluish country tissue membrane and is firmly attached to the skull. It is penetrated by many bridging veins which are mainly veins along the vertex. Echnoid matter is thin vascular mesh work like membrane beneath the dura matter. Sheets of arachnoid follows the vessels into the brain as they penetrate into the neural surfaces. Then there is pia matter which is closely adhered to the brain. So in this cross section you can see the outermost is a scalp layer beneath which is a skull which is the outer table and inner table. Then there is the dura matter which is closely adhered to the skull Below that is the subdural space, then there is the arachnoid matter, then below it is the subarachnoid space which enters into the brain convulsions, then there is a, a pia matter which is closely added to the brain. Now coming to intracranial hemorrhages which occurs mainly in the meningeal injury, meninges in any injury which leads to the hemorrhages into the meningeal layers. So, Fracture of the skull bone is the commonest cause in intracranial hemorrhages, though hemorrhage can occur even without the fracture of the skull bone. In the absence of any injury to the brain, disease process are the main cause of intracranial hemorrhages. Causes of intracranial hemorrhages mainly includes like diseases like aneurysms, arthritis, blood disorders, neoplasm, etc. Trauma to the skull or the brain or its membrane. Effects of injury upon already existing diseases can also lead to intracranial hemorrhages. According to Graham and generally, the intracranial hemorrhages are divided into two types, intraaxial hemorrhages which in which bleeding occurs within the brain itself. In this includes intrapanacranial hemorrhages or bleeding into within the brain tissue or intraventricular hemorrhages where the bleeding occurs in the brain's ventricles. Then there is extra axial hemorrhages where bleeding occurs within the skull but outside of the brain tissue. This includes extradural hemorrhage subdural hemorrhage and subarachnoid hemorrhage. And coming to one by one, extradural hemorrhage also known as epidural hematoma or epidural hemorrhage. It is a bleeding occur between the inner table of the skull and the meninges that is the dura. Cause is mainly traumatic in origin and it is unilateral in condition. It is seen in the pulse and road traffic accidents. Features of Epidural hemorrhage or extradural hemorrhage, it occurs on the side of the impact of injury and commonly arises between 20 to 40 years of age. It is infrequently in, it is, it is infrequent in elderly and young, which is below less than 2 years due to greater adherence of dura to the skull. So, in elderly and young, the dura is closely adherent to the skull, hence the hemorrhage is less. It shows typical limitation due to dura attachment to the suture lines. So, since dura is closely adherent to the suture lines, so, whenever the hemorrhage is there, it, it is limited by the suture lines. Fractures may the fissure type of fracture is present in most of the cases, that is 90-25% cases. Hairline fractures of the skull leads to extradural hemorrhage. In children's extradural hemorrhage may be seen even without the skull fractures. Size and ex extent of extradural hemorrhage is determined by the source of bleeding and the strength of attachment between the outer layer and the dura and the cranium. Artifactual epidural hematomas, artifactual that is artificial hemorrhages, artificial epidural hemorrhage that is artifacts can be seen, which seen in fire victims, in burn case victims, which is related to heat induced post traumatic post mortem skull fractures. So, post traumatic post mortem in, in case of burn injuries, after death, sometimes because of generated heat, skull may get fractured and blood may get up in the epidural space. Now, vessels involved mainly depends on the where the injuries have occurred. In lateral convexity, there is minimal major artery injury, a minimal major artery fracture, uh, the bleeding may occur. In forehead, it may be because of anterior thermidal artery hemorrhage. Occipital region, it, is because, it may be because of transfer sigma sinuses. In vertex, it may be caused because of hemorrhage from the sagittal sinuses. Fracture of the skull with tear of diploic veins. So, diploic veins are mainly the veins which connect the scalp skull with the in that way, inner veins and minimal major veins. So, this can also because of fracture tear in the diploic veins and major veins also leads to extraordinary hemorrhage. Mainly, the arterial hemorrhage is common in the 
epidural or extrusal hemorrhage. Types based on the onset, mainly it may be acute onset within few minutes to few hours or within even a day, that is arterial bleeding. If it is venous, it can mainly leads to chronic bleeding. Symptoms are slower in onset, it is 48 to 72 hours in chronic epidural hemorrhage. And it is rare and common also with tears of venous structures. So any chronic conditions mainly because of venous hemorrhage, which may occur after 48 to 72 hours of traumatic incident. Think of features of external hemorrhage. There is first is loss of consciousness due to concussion. Then there is dilatation of pupils on the side of hemorrhage and conjugate due to deviation of the eyes opposite on the opposite side. Sometimes there is bilateral fixation of the pupils also seen. Then there is lucid interval that is symptomless period between symptom period. So lucid interval is period where there is symptomless period that is no symptoms occur. So in between two period of symptoms, there is a period, gap of period where there is no symptoms. So this is called as lucid interval. So it may occur in the uh, mentally ill also in cases of hemorrhage where sometimes for example if there is a headache, there may be interval between two interval that is two hour gap may be there where there is no headache may also see. So that is called a lucid interval and that period is very difficult to ascertain. Features of cerebral compressions like it may be present which may lead to coma. Then there is disabled rigidity and death may be due to because of respiratory failure can also seen in case of exterior hemorrhage. Diagnosis of hemorrhage is mainly by CT scan. In CT scan it is usually it looks like a biconvex lenticular shaped hemorrhage. So it looks like a biconvex hemorrhage in the skull and it is mainly due to the adherence of the dura to the inside of the cranium. It looks like a biconvex lenticular hemorrhage. So this is a exterior hemorrhage, this is a skull. And this is a fissure fracture which may lead to have a, may arterial bleeding which may get accumulated in between the skull and the dura. Autopsy findings, there may be scalp contusions may be present associated with the hematoma. Hematoma in the space on removal of the skull cap uh, along with the fissure fracture may be seen. Diffuse brain swelling and cerebral contusions may be present. Subfalcan herniation that is the uh, herniation that is cerebral uh, brain may get herniated into the park cerebri from the side of the hematoma because of hematoma. Effacement of sulci and flattening of the crust of the gyre which gives a smooth appearance of the brain. So because of pressure of the hematoma sometimes sulci that is sulci that is the veiny convulsions which are present on the brains may get flattened up and may look like a brain surface may look like smooth. Medical aspects of external hemorrhage, hematoma on contralateral side should be carefully excluded. Sometimes it may be missed, it may lead to cause, it may be lead to some uh, misfindings. Patients may be discharged from hospitals during a lucid interval and may die at home, which may, may, which may be charged with negligence. So sometimes patients may be discharged from the hospitals thinking that there are no symptoms and may die because, because of chronic concept of epidural hemorrhage and May, which may cause, which may lead the doctor to suit with the negligence suit. The condition may sometimes resemble drunkenness and patient may die in police custody if it is, if he is arrested. Presence of external hemorrhage may or may not cause death also. It may lead, may be primary cause and it may not be a primary cause of death. Now coming to subdural hemorrhage. So it is a bleeding hemorrhage occurring between the under surface of dura and outer surface of arachnoid. So between dura and the arachnoid matter, the hemorrhage occurs. So it is essentially venous or capillary or, and it is not an arterial bleeding. So sub arachnoid space or subdural space is mainly attenuated by venous sinuses. Hence, it is mainly the venous bleeding and capillary and it is not, not an arterial bleeding. Cause it is usually traumatic following assault of all which is 70-75% cases. Accident upon for about 20-25% to cases. And it can also due to secondary causes including alcoholism and anticoagulant therapy and other diseases may also lead to bleeding in the subdural space. So this is the image of subdural space between the dura and the arachnoid. So this is arachnoid matter and this is the dura matter. So this is the hemorrhage in the subdural space and this black is the biomatter. Features of subdural hemorrhage it is the most common head injuries ending fatally. So this is the most common form of hemorrhage and it is the most common cause of fatality in case of head injury. 
Hematoma often associated with the fracture of the skull. It is commonly seen in elderly and alcoholics. Location of subdural hemorrhage does not necessarily correlate with the location of the blunt force trauma and sometimes it may be on the opposite side also. In infant, less than 1 years of age, subdural space is narrower and less tolerant of space occupying lesions. So hence, there, there is less hemorrhage in the subdural space in as infants. Vessels involved in subdural hemorrhage, mainly the rupture of breaching or communicating veins transferring the subdural space is the commonest bleeding vessels. Tears in dural venous sciences may also lead to subdural hemorrhage. Cerebral contusions, lacerations after the fall may also lead to bleeding in the subdural space. Fresh tear of old digestions between dura and the brain with bleeding may also cause subdural hemorrhage. Site It is commonly seen over the upper lateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere and most commonly in the sub supratentorial that is the frontal temporal region. The blood pressure, the blood presses on the both the crust and depth of the gyre, hence cerebral convergence retain the normal contour. So usually this arachnoid is convoluted within, which is brain convergence is present, arachnoid uh, subdural space. So anywhere there is hemorrhage is occurs, it uh, accumulates between the, uh, it, it, it blood presses along the crust and the depths of the gyre, hence there is the brain retains the contour, normal contour in the subdural hemorrhage. It causes displacement of cerebral hemispheres with flattening of the convergence of the opposite hemisphere. So in the same side may not cause flattening, but in the opposite side, because of pressure, it may cause the convergence that may have to get flattened. Types of subdural hemorrhage. Subdural hemorrhage is classified mainly based on the onset that is acute into acute, subacute and chronic and based on the length of it is mainly because of length of history, neurobrain in findings and appearance of blood within the hematoma when it is dead. So coming to acute subdural hemorrhage, in this science I would have taken three days of injury. Since subdural hemorrhage are mainly venous, so they usually occur late onset. Acute onset signs are mainly seen within three days, so it doesn't appear within one or two days. It has occurs due to rupture of large bridging veins or the cortical artery or due to cerebral illustrations. It is mostly unilateral, maybe bilateral with mortality of 90% cases. In this, there is a drowsy or comatose patient, unilateral headache, hemiparesis that is of half side of the body is paralyzed. There is enlarged pupil on the same side are frequently seen. Blood tends to accumulate in the base of the skull, especially in the middle cranial fossa. So usually the blood drains and get the in the base of the skull. Subacute subdural hemorrhage, these are evident within 4 to 21 days. It is due to rupture of small bridging veins. It is associated with minor cerebral contusions or swellings. There is drowsiness, headache, confusion, forgetfulness and mild hemiparesis. Mortality is less in these cases. Blood is partially clotted and partially fluid due to hemolysis or digestion by the CSF. Then chronic, also known as pachymeningitis hemorrhagica interna chronica. In this, there is headache, conge cognitive decline, gait abnormalities and hemiparesis occurs after more than three weeks after trauma. It is most common in infants less than six months of age and in mainly in the elderly after 60 years. It is usually seen over the pattern rope near the midline. It is frequently the incidental finding at autopsy in the older persons. Since it doesn't cause much of the pressure, it is it may be found incidentally in the elderly. It can be diagnosed by CT scan. It appears as convo convex crescentic opacity in the in the CT scan. Age of subdural hemorrhage. In the first four days, the hematoma undergoes clotting and gradually becomes dark red in color, dark red to brownish in color in five to ten days. There is this heat fragile membrane formation by two weeks, liquefaction of clot occurs by three weeks and after one month firm capsule containing the dark brown water fluid is formed. So clot, first there is clot formation which becomes dark brownish color, then it becomes liquefied, then there is a membrane formation along the clot and there is a which consists of a dark brown water fluid. Precise estimation of age of subdural hemorrhage can be done histologically, which is more accurate than compared to gross changes. Autopsy findings in subdural hemorrhage. Externally, evidence of blunt force injury may be commonly, commonly seen in the case of face. Skull fractures are usually present 
near the hemorrhage hematoma clotted or partially liquefied hematoma is seen then assignation of gyral pattern on the affected side and flattening of the opposite side is present assignation that is bleeding gets accumulated during the gyral then there is flattening in the opposite side of the brain in an acute subdural hemorrhage there is no enclosing membranes in but in chronic subdural hemorrhage present mainly classically has typically hematoma surrounded by clearly defined membranes so as age progresses clear defined membrane is formed accumulating the hemorrhage then there is also stans tentorial hemorrhage may also be seen in case of subdural hemorrhage medical aspects the presence of any amount of subdural hemorrhage is an indicator that the amount of force sustained by the individual so it indicates that much of the force is uh, much force is required for subdural hemorrhage hence it indicates that the quarrel was very uh, violent and which has led to subdural hemorrhage histopathology of sth both acute and chronic is used for basis of estimation of the period between the injury and death it is very helpful in determining the time since the injury has occurred subdural hygroma this is a variant of subdural hematoma in which other than the blood it, in its subdural space it is accumulated by the csf in subdural space it occurs mainly because when arachnoid is torn so arachnoid is below the arachnoid space the csf is mainly flows so whenever the arachnoid is torn at the csf flows from the arachnoid my arachnoid space into the subdural space csf may pass from the arachnoid space into the subdural space and there is a large collection of fluid making it and cause cerebral compression it is usually seen in infants and children this chronic lesion has all the features of subdural hematoma except trauma which is not seen it may develop in complications of meningitis hydrocephalus and head trauma with or without skull fractures so mainly there is a, a complication of a disease which may lead to escape of cells from the subdural space which will cause signs and symptoms similar to of subdural hematoma because of cerebral compression now coming to third main hair intercranial hemorrhage which is the sub subarachnoid hematoma so this is hemorrhage which occurs in the subarachnoid space between the arachnoid and the pia mater which is mainly mixed with csf since csf flows below the subarachnoid space the bleeding is mixed with the csf the subarachnoid hemorrhage is common in traumatic brain injury even in the minor head trauma small amount of localized subarachnoid hemorrhage over the cerebral convexities is almost invariably seen is most prominent prominent close to its source so when it, at the, it is most commonly seen in the source of impact it is extensive because of csf and unclotted subarachnoid blood flow freely in the subarachnoid space since csf flows over the brain so it is becomes extensive and compresses the bone equally so and when the brain is removed at all see subarachnoid membrane remains covering the brain so hence, since hence so bleeding occurs between the gyra and the bleeding occurs and when the brain is removed we can clearly see in the blood, blood clot below the arachnoid space which can be clearly identified as subarachnoid hemorrhage causes of in subarachnoid hemorrhage it is mainly mostly in venous in origin it may be non traumatic or traumatic in origin in non traumatic or natural causes there is rupture of development aneurysms is a commonish cause which is which may be in any aneurysms which may be in the circle of village circle of wheels there is any aneurysm in the circle of wheels commonly the benign very aneurysm which may rupture leading to subarachnoid hemorrhage then maybe because there may be the arterial venous malformation which is seen in 10% of cases then arteriosclerotic changes in blood vessels mainly in the old so old individuals uh, there may be arteriosclerotic changes may be seen which may rupture and leading to subarachnoid hemorrhage then leaking intracerebral hemorrhage intracerebral hemorrhages this is conditions like peripheric states or leukemia conditions acute alcoholism so acute alcoholism conditions because of person loses motor motor coordination there may be hyperextension hyperflexions and there may be traumatic injury on the head which may lead to bleeding and also because since alcohol causes congestion of the uh, dilatation in the blood vessels the bleeding usually bleeding occurs and it may lead to subarachnoid hemorrhage then traumatic causes of subarachnoid hemorrhage there there is cerebral contusions may be there because of contusions or lacerations of brain maybe because of explosive blast asphyxia asphyxia may lead to uh, rupture of the blood vessels because of pressure of the blood 
there may be because there may be asphyxia of strangulation or traumatic asphyxia blows to the neck accidents or falls may also lead to subacute hemorrhage rupture of traumatic intracerebral hemorrhage that is hemorrhage within the brain parenchyma may also lead to hemorrhage in the subacute space prolonged hyperextension in case of bronchoscopy may also lead to extension of blood vessels and rupture of blood vessels mainly in the subacute space site of hemorrhage is mainly predominantly in the basal distribution since arachnoid space equally accumulates the space brain so the blood gets gets drain and accumulate in the basilar part of the brain it is usually found over the orbital surface of the frontal lobe lateral lobe and anterior third of the temporal lobes it can be unilateral bilateral localized or diffuse types it may be immediate which occurs within hours or delayed or reaction hemorrhage until initial contraction and retraction of vessels are subsided which may be called mainly the delayed post traumatic subacute hemorrhage may be seen clinical features there is sudden onset of severe unusual headache that is also may also sometimes called as thunderclap headache may be commonest cause of commonest symptoms seen in subacute hemorrhage there may be nausea and vomiting neck stiffness photophobia drowsiness eye and agitation depressed consciousness may be also seen then physical findings there may be meningism, meningism and positive kerning sign may be present kerning sign is where the person is made to flex the knee and sometimes when when knee is again ex passively extended there may be a pain severe pain in the neck diagnosis of subacute hemorrhage mainly ct scan and sometimes if ct scan is not helpful lumbar puncture differential diagnosis mainly bacterial management has to be differentiated between the subacute hemorrhage coming to medical aspects of subacute hemorrhage atherosclerotic vessels in older persons with high bp ruptures may easily is is easily than the normal ones so common cause of subacute hemorrhage is the older individuals individuals with hypertension which may uh, lead to aneurysms which may lead to rupture which may be common cause it is possible to testify that trauma has caused or persisted the rupture of the developmental benignisms so if the person knows that person has aneurysm and he may try to uh, assassinate the aneurysm by hitting it and it may lead to death so it may lead to conditional uh, conditional homicide subacute hemorrhage may can be produced post mortem secondary to decomposition it can also produce during process of removing of the brain and also lead to subacute hemorrhage so this is the image of subacute hemorrhage and this is the image of intracerebral hemorrhage where the bleeding occurs inside the brain parenchyma which may sometimes escape into the subacute space also now coming to intracerebral hematoma these are mainly the intraaxial hematoma so based on the classification extraaxial hemorrhages are which hemorrhages occurs outside the brain so intraaxial hemorrhages are between the brain so hemorrhages formed within the cerebral parenchyma which is not contact with the surface of the which is not in the contact with the surface of the brain are intracerebral hemorrhages so features of intracerebral hemorrhages so traumatic intracerebral hemorrhages is the commonest which is seen 50% of all the patients who sustain fetal head injuries so any patient who has fetal head injury there is chance of intracerebral hemorrhage most likely results from the direct rupture of intrinsic cerebral blood vessels in relation to contusion of the time of injury maybe single or multiple in region multiple region of brain may have intracerebral hemorrhage causes hypertension trauma cerebral amyloid angiopathy other diseases associated with that may also be seen advanced stage heavy alcohol and cocaine use also has an increased risk of intracerebral hemorrhage usually it is also it is due to disease of cerebral vessels hypertension which is a contributing cause of intracerebral hemorrhage then there is spontaneous hemorrhage in the region of causes of intracerebral hemorrhage spontaneous hemorrhage in the region of basic ganglia capillary hemorrhage in in anoxia arterial thrombosis blood dyskinesis fat embolism asphyxial states so any asphyxial states anoxic states may lead to smaller hemorrhages in the parenchyma because of rupture of the small blood vessels angioma or malignant tumor of the brain is also one of the cause hypertension cerebral vascular diseases may lead to bleeding from the arteries the atherosclerotic blood vessels then laceration of the brain then peripheral toxemia that is peripherism may also can lead to intracerebral hemorrhages sites of intracerebral hemorrhages 
Inter cell hemorrhages are well demarcated homogeneous collection of blood seen most frequently in the white matter of the frontotemporal lobes, commonly seen in the frontotemporal lobes, the white matter. Then coming to traumatic and non traumatic ICS, which has to be differentiated. The cause of inter cell hemorrhage at times remains uncertain and coincidentally, hypertensive hemorrhages or hemorrhages associated with cerebral and amyloid angiopathy may be difficult to exclude. The exclusion of hypertensive hemorrhage is presumptive based on the lack of history of hypertension and absence of gross and microscopic features. So traumatic intercellular hemorrhage has to differentiate a non-traumatic, which is mainly the non-traumatic is mainly because of the hypertension. So if when, when we can differentiate, cause of post-traumatic is mainly because of head injury and spontaneous uh, cerebral hemorrhage is mainly because of hypertension, atherosclerosis or aneurysms. Then post-traumatic is mainly seen in young individuals in a, the apoplexy that is the spontaneous cerebral hemorrhage is mainly because of uh, middle and old age. Onset is distinct interval after injury, it is mean sudden and mainly head is in motion in any position it may occur. Mechanism there is blunt force injury, there is rupture of uh, rupture because of diseases located in the white matter of frontal temporal regions, mainly it is seen in the granular regions that is a uh, spontaneous bleeding. Concussion may be seen, it is not seen in not present in the spontaneous bleeding. Coma is variable and in cerebral, uh, spontaneous cerebral hemorrhage, it is unconsciousness is not present, only deep unconsciousness is present. Clinical features of intercerebral hemorrhage, there is abrupt onset of focal neurological deficit, diminished level of consci consciousness, signs of increased intracranial pressure such as vomiting and headache are present. Seizures are uncommon and there is sometimes contractor hemiparesis, it is opposite hemiparesis are present. Diagnosis mainly by CT scan. Intercerebral hemorrhage appears as hyperdense lesions and also with mass effects and midline shifts are also present. Next, uh, intraaxial hemorrhage is the interventricular hemorrhage where there is bleeding in the ventricles of the in the brain. There is copious blood in the fourth ventricle seen through foramen of Lushka and Mangandi before the brain is dissection can be taken as in the evidence of interventricular hemorrhage. So when are, during the autopsy, they are only found during the autopsy and bleeding in the foramen of Lushka and Mangandi is confirmed that there is some interventricular hemorrhage is present. It may be because of trauma or non-trauma. Traumatic IVH is mainly primary or secondary. Primary traumatic interventricular hemorrhage is rare but occurs mainly because in case of motor vehicle accidents and assaults. Secondary IVH is mainly common after trauma which is usually self-evident when the brain is sectioned and hematoma is found continuity with the ventricles. Non-traumatic primary interventricular hemorrhage originates from the ruptured brain aneurysms or vascular malformations. So non-traumatic is mainly because of aneurysms which may rupture into the ventricles of the brain. These are my references. Thank you.